This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Friday, March the 8th, 2019. It's the feast of St. John of God. John's early life involved being kidnapped into slavery and a life on the streets until he managed to become part of the Portuguese military. He was caught up in a criminal investigation but was exonerated but unfortunately discharged. He managed to find the family from which he was kidnapped but only an uncle remained. Distraught, he intended to travel to Africa to minister to enslaved people there and hopefully to be martyred. While he was on his way, he came across a colony which had been ransacked by brigands. And so he spent a few months there caring for the ill and working odd jobs to help feed them. When he eventually left there to continue on to Africa, he experienced a vision of the infant Jesus who gave him the name John of God and told him to go to Grenada in Spain where he worked as a printer using the newly available Gutenberg printing press. In 1537, on the feast of St. Sebastian, he attended a sermon preached by St. John of the Cross and experienced a profound conversion. He took to acts of severe public penance. St. John of the Cross heard about all of this and came to visit John of God. John of the Cross encouraged John of God to stop worrying so much with himself and to devote his life to caring for others. So after a long series of visitations by Jesus and the Blessed Virgin Mary and some more wandering about, John founded an order of religious brothers dedicated to health care for the poor. He died in 1550 at the age of 55, but his brothers, who are known colloquially as the Fate Bene Fratelli, the do-good brothers, continue to minister in 46 countries today. Today is the birthday in 1879 of Otto Hahn. He was a German chemist and mathematician who aspired to be an industrial chemist, designing medicines and soaps and chemicals for industrial products. In an effort to get ahead of the field in his native Germany, he managed to wrangle a post at the University College of London under the famous chemist William Ramsey, who had discovered the inert gases. Ramsey had moved on to radioactive elements just about the time that Hahn arrived, and within a year, Hahn had discovered what both men believed to be a new element, which they named radiothorium. Year after year, Hahn made breakthroughs on new aspects of radioactivity and nuclear physics and what would come to be known as isotopes. His Nobel Prize, though, would come from his discovery in 1938 of nuclear fission. This was an extension of the work of Enrico Fermi and Albert Einstein and others. Fission is the process in which an atom divides at the nucleus into two or more atoms, releasing huge amounts of energy in the forms of heat and light. It's what would be the basis for the atom bombs dropped only eight years later on Japan to end World War II. Hahn wasn't the first to theorize or even to do the math for fission, but he was the first to prove it surrounded by a lot of very smart men and women who were trying to do the same thing. Finally today in 1848, Lamarcus Adna Thompson was born in Jersey, Ohio. He was an excellent carpenter as a young man and a very savvy businessman who made his first fortune in the manufacture of seamless hosiery for ladies. When his health prevented him from running that business, he sold out and turned his attention to designing gravity-based amusement park rides. In short, he's the father of the roller coaster and the architect of the first American roller coaster on Coney Island in 1884. He died in 1919. He was born today in 1848. Lamarcus Adna Thompson. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.